Hello and welcome to my trailer breakdown for patch 4.3. Patch 4.3 is scheduled to be released on May the 22nd. However, today, May the 12th, alongside the letter from the producer live part 44, this trailer was released. This video will possibly feature spoilers and obviously information about patch 4.3, so if you don't want to know anything about it, please do not watch. The opening scene shows Yotsuyu seemingly awakening from her state of mind, whether or not she has come to terms with her past and realised who she is, or if she is dropping the proposed act, if it is such a thing, of pretending to not be herself. Her speech and actions during this trailer introduction seemingly point towards that. The second scene before we fade back to Yotsuyu actually shows the forbidden land of Eureka, Pagos. Pagos is an icy winterland. This is the second part of our expedition into Eureka, complete with notorious monsters in this vast icy area. Tapping back to Yotsuyu again, whom seems to almost be having flashbacks of people she has either killed or there are a relative time where she has actually caused suffering to this individual. It then fades to her brother, Asahi, Sas Brutus, fading into an unshrouded moon. This could signify the shroud being lifted from her mind. The Stormblood logo soon fades over the moon itself, and then we get another scene from the main scenario, showing what appears to be a Garlean control room, with Garlean soldiers turning around before it cuts off before revealing who walks into the room. Then we fade to the Scions, standing around a gravestone, referring to how Xenos could not possibly be alive after he sacrificed himself after the fight with Shinryu, then seemingly fading into what appears to be completely recovered Xenos Ye Galvus, who appears to have a bandage around his neck. Almost immediately we get shots of the Ridorana lighthouse from the new Return to Ivalis raid, which also appears to show Belias from Final Fantasy XII, shortly thereafter fading to another one of those Aurasite, clasped in something's hand. Then we see a lady aboard the Prima Vista carrying a box of Aurasite, transitioned into the Warrior of Light and his Alliance party, traversing through the many catacombs of the Ridorana lighthouse. Shortly thereafter, the activation of what appears to be a boss, which seems to be a golem of sorts with three glowing chest orbs and magic bound. It then fades to this lovely piece of artwork, which could be a flashback storytelling technique, seen as the next scene, what I think is Begamnon and his associate on the Prima Vista, fading then to the inner clockwork mechanics of the Ridorana lighthouse. The next scene seemingly showing what appears to be Famfrit from Final Fantasy XII, or at least the Zodiac Brave storyline in, in Final Fantasy XIV, with his signature vase and water attack fighting the Alliance raid. It then tabs to more storyline to do with the Alliance raid, and then finally back to that mechanical golem who seems to have the power and seemingly sucks in the entire alliance raid into what appears to be like an Ozma orb, which will probably be a portal to another dimension. Then it fades from the signature dude Lalafell from the Animos storyline, the Lalafell confronting what appears to be the Black Masked Man from that storyline which then fades to various bosses within Pagos, the new Pazuzu-type notorious monsters, which look really cool. And then finally one last shot, where that Lalafell character is staring forwards towards the centre of Eureka itself, which is still locked behind a barrier. Then we get footage of Heaven on High inside this with the side story cutscene, and then monsters being fought. Then we get what appears to be Gamvu inside Ryzen Temple, either a new fight inside the Swallow's Compass, or part of a new trial. It's most likely the former, since they promised that none of the trial footage would be in the trailer. Then we get more main scenario cutscenes of now talking, and seemingly more flashbacks there of Eureka and the meeting between the original people v facility on the Isle of Val itself. Then more of Heaven on High with one of these randomly generated huge dojo rooms with light from the floor above cascading into the rooms below. A monkey is being slain by a samurai with great prejudice inside Heaven on High and we finally get an outside shot of what we've seen all along. Then we're straight back to the main scenario again, with Yotsuyu dropping her permis on and her plate, with Gosetsu screaming, asking if there is anything wrong with Tsuyu. She then screams she's sorry, and then we get this cutscene where it appears to be the Warrior of Light fighting through flashbacks of her past, with one of the scenes clearly showing Xenos Ye Galvus, presumably from the past, which shows her completely distraught. Confronted by Asahi, it seems the Warrior of Light is fighting through all of these emotions in a flashback-type scene, 
perhaps a fragment of the Echo. Alpha now seems to be having a tough time himself in whatever situation that Empire area is. Control panel there is exploding with lightning, and then we get Asahi simply close his eyes, open them and pull a gun on the camera. The next scene is really unusual, where it shows Gosetsu fighting against Xenosye Galvis in what appears to be again another flashback. Shortly before the scene switches to more bosses within the dojos of Heaven on High and actual bosses from Pagos itself. Finally, the trailer ends with Gosetsu failing to withstand Xenos' advances and Xenos strikes Gosetsu down, where the screen fades to white. Then, from the white, a moon appears. The moon shatters and turns into the lettering under the moonlight for patch 4.3. The screen then fades to black, and then we get footage of Ultima Weapon Ultimate, which features Ifrit, Garuda, and Titan, forcing Ultima Weapon itself use Ultima and destroy the entire screen, followed by an initial fade out and a fade in of their promotion to actually try Final Fantasy XIV today. Either way, there's lots of stuff locked within these scenes that perhaps even I have missed. Filled to the brim with storyline, they haven't really shown much else in here. None of the crafting dailies or Namazu tribe was actually shown in this trailer, surprisingly. Either way, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.